This is Mrs. Downey, and we're going to go over 2-2 two, two and 2-3 two, today. Um, we started off with bell work of 2-3 with linear functions and slope intercept form. I had the students copy in their journal the key concept of the slope, that the slope of a non-vertical line through points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is the ratio of the vertical change to the corresponding horizontal change. So then you had the formula of slope equal the vertical change, which is your rise, over your horizontal change, which is the run. That comes down to let me change colors. y2 minus y1 over your horizontal change, x2 minus x1. And they denote here that x2 minus x1 can never equal 0. That's because you can't have 0 in a denominator of a fraction. That makes an undefined number. And we're going to come back to using this in a couple of minutes, but to begin the day, I wanted the kids to definitely have this in their journal. It's important. So, um, we want to talk about the slope of a non-vertical line. It's the ratio of your vertical change to your horizontal change between two points. So it's a constant change and that's what makes the straight line. You can calculate the slope by finding the ratio of the difference in your y coordinates, so that would be your y2 minus y1 over your x2 minus x1. So just pick two points on the line call them point 0.1, point 0.2, label x1, y1, x2, y2, and apply the formula. Now we're going to back up a little bit to direct variation. Direct variation is what we teach before slope, and it's a simplistic view of what slope is. So it says you can write a formula for direct variation as a function of y equals kx. Okay, and k is called your constant of variation. So if I have y equal to x, I can say this is a direct variation because it follows this formula, and my constant of variation is 2. So if we look at how can we tell if something's a direct variation, um, we didn't get to do this the first part of the day, so this is going to be new for them, and we did it the last half of the day. This was because of our advisory schedule. So in the first problem, we have tables. Well, all you have to do is take that ratio. How is this changing? Well, you're going to take y over x and look at how this ratio changes or maybe it won't change. So we're going to have a 2 over 1, that's equal to 2, and the next one is 6 over 3, that's equal to 2, and 8 over 4, which is also equal to 2. Because these remain constant ratios, this is a direct variation. And my constant variation, my k value, is this 2. So if they want us to write a function rule, well, we'll say, y equals kx, and we know that the k in this instance is 2. So it's going to be y equals 2x. Let's look at the one on the right. So they say 4 over 1 equals 4, 8 over 2, which equals 4, but the last one is 11 thirds, which is not equal to 4. So this is not a direct variation. This y does not vary directly with x, so there's no k value. Okay, next we went over these. So it says for each function, determine whether y varies directly with x. If so, what's the constant of variation? So we have 5x plus 3y equals 0. We need to make it look like y equals kx. So we need to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 5x from each side. And I get 3y equal negative 5x plus 0. 
Next thing, I need to isolate my y, so divide each side by 3, and I get my y is equal to negative 5 thirds x. Well, yes, this is a direct variation, and my k value is equal to negative 5 thirds. The next one, y equals x over 9. Well, that's the same thing as saying y equals 1 over 9 times x over 1, correct? And x over 1 is just x. So that's like saying y equals 1 ninth x. So yes, this is a direct variation, and my k value is equal to 1 ninth. Our next problems are identifying direct variation from equations. So it's more of the same of what we just did. I've got a 3y equals 7x. So again, I've got to get it to look like y equals kx. So divide both sides by 3, and I get that y equals 7 thirds x. So yes, this is a direct variation, and my k value equals 7 thirds. Uh, B so we've got 7y equals 14x plus 7. Well, I'm isolating my y, so divide everything by 7. And I get y equals 2x plus 1. Because of the plus 1, that's something extra. That doesn't look like y equals kx. It's got something extra. So no, this is not a direct variation. And that was it for direct variation. There might be one or two of those on our test, but it would be just like those we just worked. Moving on to 2, 3 now, and there's no homework for 2, 2. Okay, I just wanted to introduce the direct variation. Notice that direct variation is the ratio of change. All that turns out to be is slope. So if you graph a direct variation, y equals 2x. <coughs> so as x and y is changing, when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2. And when x equals 0, y equals 0. All direct variations go through the origin. And then when x equals 1, y equals 2. So you get a line. For all direct variation, all direct variation will run through the origin because of the equation. Anytime x is 0, no matter what your k value is, it's going to turn your equation to 0. So all of these will run through the origin. Now, um, after direct variation, we just say, well, it's, you're talking about the slant of the line. And uh, we later learned this is our slope. And with slope, we do a little more than direct variation. We could do things like move it up, move it down, move it a different direction. Okay. So now instead of saying k to show the ratio of change, we're going to use for slope m. And we're going to use this formula right here called the slope-intercept form. M is our slope, B is our y-intercept, and we're going to talk more about this in just a minute. The first thing we want to do is look at what is slope and how do we find slope. And it says, what is the slope of the line that passes through the given points? Well, they get us negative 3, 7, and negative 2, 4. So this is your x, 1, y, 1 and your x2, y2. So from the formula that I had the students copy at the beginning of the hour, you just apply it. So it's going to be 4 minus 7 over negative 2 minus a negative 3. And that comes out to negative 3 over 1. Some students go ahead and take it down to that, but slope, we want to see rise over run, so it's good to keep it in fraction form. Now here's 1, 3, 1, and negative 4, 1. So again, you're going to have 1 minus 1 over negative 4 minus 3. 
So you end up with 0 over negative 7. And that's a valid number. That's like saying I've got a slope of 0. Now when we look at this third example, you've got 1 minus a negative 3 over 7 minus 7. When you do that, you get 4 over 0. Well, that's not a valid number. That is undefined. There is no slope. Okay, no slope. It's undefined. And we'll learn what these look like when we graph them in just a minute. So, when you have a positive slope, he rises from the left to the right. When you have a negative slope, he falls from the left to the right. And a zero slope is just a horizontal line, and an undefined slope is a vertical line. What I told the students today is the negative slope is the only one that can make a capital N. N for negative. That means that the other one is the positive. Where, when we graph these, they go across a coordinate plane and go across the x and y axis. Where they cross the x and y axis, those are the intercepts. Where it crosses the y axis, that's the y intercept. And where it crosses the x axis, that's the x intercept. The y-intercept is most important to us when working with slope. We use it in our formula. So now we're into the slope-intercept form, which I talked about a minute ago. y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. If they ask us what's the equation of each line and they give us m is 1 fifth and the y-intercept is 0, negative 3, well when you think about the y-intercept being at 0, negative 3, well that's just a, 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 a y-intercept of negative 3, that's your b value. So you're going to use your slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and substitute one-fifth for m and negative three for b. And then clean up your signs and you have y equals one-fifth x minus three. Now looking at a graph, they give us two points here and we want to calculate our slope from these two points. So they're giving us this Different this one and this one. So we know this is our y-intercept, so our b value is 4. But what's our slope? Well, you can count between these two points, rise of 1, 2, 3, and a run of negative 1. So your slope could be 3 over negative 1, which is a negative 3. Or you could take the coordinates of each point and plug them into your form. So once you get your y-intercept and your slope, you can just plug it into your y equals mx plus b as y equals negative 3x plus 4. So writing equations in slope-intercept form, now it says write the equation in slope-intercept form. What are the slope and the y-intercept? and they give us 5x minus 4y equals 16. So the first thing you have to do is solve for y. Okay, so what you want to do first is subtract 5x from each side, and you end up with negative 4y equals negative 5x plus 16. Now divide each side, every term, by negative 4. When you do that, you get y equals positive 5 fourths x minus 4. So 
you've got a slope of 5 fourths and a y-intercept of negative 4. Okay, the second one, you've got negative 3 fourths x plus 1 half y equals negative 1. So again, we need to add 3 fourths x to each side and then multiply each side by 2. Every term by 2. And you end up with a slope of 3 halves and a y-intercept of negative 2. And those were just extra examples we worked throughout the day and I got it. The last thing I want to show you is how to graph a linear function. So what is the graph of negative 2x plus y equal 1? Well, you want to get it in the slope-intercept form. And we can do that. We can get it to y equals 2x plus 1. So now we see we've got a y-intercept of 1 with the slope of 2, or let's make it a fraction, 2 over 1. So you want to start by just plotting your y-intercept right there, the 1. Now count out your slope the 2 over 1. That means rise 2, run 1 from that point. So rise 2, run 1, and plot your second point. And then connect your two lines, or two dots with a line. And that's how you graph from your equation. And that was it for today. Your assignment today was to do 2-3 number practice K numbers 1 through 12 all and those will be due tomorrow and thank you very much and thank you for listening goodbye